These latest headlines from ABC 15 are sponsored by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorneys. One call, that's all. I'm Faye Fredericks with your top stories from ABC 15 Arizona. New at three, tracking a developing story right now. A teenager facing charges accused of trying to plant a bomb at the Phoenix Pride Parade this past weekend. Maricopa County Attorney's Office says 17-year-old Marvin J. Lo, whose mugshot you see here, had the materials to make an explosive device and shared plans for the attack. In a statement, the office says between November of last year and May of this year, J. Lo discussed the supplies needed in online chat rooms and had them shipped to him. He's facing one count of terrorism and one count of conspiracy to commit terrorism. County Attorney Rachel Mitchell releasing a statement saying it takes a tremendous amount of cooperative work by law enforcement to develop a lead, locate a suspect, interrupt an attack and make an arrest before a tragedy could happen. I am deeply grateful and immensely proud of our MCAO investigators and our law enforcement partners for their integral involvement in this case. We'll continue to follow this story and have updates throughout the evening. A suspect arrested in connection to three shootings at the DNC office in Tempe. Police say Jeffrey Michael Kelly is the suspect in yesterday's East Valley hazmat scare as well. That was linked to homemade political signs along 44th Street. Our Josh Cristianto gathering the very latest in the case. Hear from him ahead at 5. Two children are dead following a crash on the 202 near Brown Road in Mesa this morning. DPS says a 36-year-old woman was driving a pickup truck with three children. The mother telling investigators she was distracted by the kids fighting in the back seat and hit a tow truck in the emergency lane that did have its flashers on. Force of that crash tore off the right side of the pickup. An 11-year-old girl and a 9-year-old boy both died in the crash. The mother may face charges when she's released from the hospital. The tow truck driver was not hurt. A Mesa toddler in serious condition after a near drowning. Mesa firefighters say a two-year-old was pulled out of a pool near Baseline and Dobson before they arrived. That child rushed to the hospital. A motorcyclist has died after a crash yesterday with a Goodyear police officer. Investigators say the patrol car had its lights and sirens on while responding to a call. It entered an intersection at Estrella Parkway and Fillmore Street against a red light and was hit by that motorcycle. The rider, 38-year-old Jacob Vela, wasn't wearing a helmet and died of his injuries. The officer has minor injuries. A man's been arrested, accused of trying to lure a teenage girl for sexual exploitation. Glendale police say 37-year-old Isaiah Navarro talked to the 14-year-old girl and tried to get her phone number, but she gave her her mom's number. When he got in contact, the mom called police who took over the conversation. Police say Navarro described and asked for specific sex acts. He was arrested when he thought he was meeting up with the teen. Maricopa County out with new numbers on heat related deaths and this past summer could become our most deadly on record. State, county and city officials all working to make adjustments after a deadly summer in 2023. ABC 15 has been tracking the county dashboard all year. New numbers released Tuesday show there have been 429 deaths with 241 still under investigation. The confirmed heat death totals are lower than this time last year, but the number under investigation is high. We agree that we want to save lives and that we want to we want to prevent these, you know, heat deaths from happening. Problem is, you know, we're still uh, even as we're increasing our efforts, the heat's increasing, too. ABC 15 reaching out to Maricopa County officials who told us it's still too early to project how this season will compare overall to 2023. Number of heat related deaths under investigation is the maximum number possible. We also learned Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego will host a press event on heat data and the response tomorrow morning. I'm Chief Meteorologist Amber Sellins tracking your forecast tomorrow as we continue this stretch in the 90s. The morning still looks great, nice and cool and 67 degrees at 6 a.m. But we'll hit the upper 80s by lunchtime, which would be a normal high for this time of year. Then go up to 96 around 4 p.m., just three degrees shy of tomorrow's record. High pressure is bringing the heat this week and potentially some record setting days on Friday and Saturday. But we do have another storm system that we're tracking for early next week. This is going to crank up wind as it passes by, tracking gusts near 40 miles per hour in parts of the high country and a slight chance for spotty showers, including maybe up to an inch of snow in the Flagstaff area. Still very early out, so we will see um, models 
get fine tuned a little bit in the days ahead. Regardless, we do expect some much cooler air across the state and the cool down in your seven day forecast takes us from 99 degrees on Saturday down to 77 on Wednesday.